They say if you remove the statistics that Benita and they give about criminals in our province, South Africa is a better country. If we can fix how we can, we can fix South Africa in terms of crime. We have trained these young people to be police wardens. You as a minister, you are refusing to recognize them. Your days are numbered. These are things that are numbered. We can't, when young people are assisting us to fight crime, you want to undermine them. You can't, when we have trained young people to be in the streets in our township and protect our young people when they are studying at night in our schools, you don't want to recognize them. We say to this minister, give us the power for these young people to have the power to get guns so that they can protect our township and chase away criminals in our own area. And we are committed for that particular case. Because that's how we want to protect our people. We can't have police. It's the first one to run away, but it tends to be a policeman. We don't criticize policemen because we want them to be fit, we want them to be agile, we want them to have the necessary resources to fight crime in our province. After a video of Panyaza Lisufi that was trending on social media allegedly threatening the job of Minister of Police, Begi Tele, Panyaza Lisufi saw it fit to respond to the claims of him threatening the job of Begi Tele. And in a statement, he says, uh, the, the first two paragraphs, in the last 24 hours, I've noticed with disappointment the slicing and leaking of a video recording of an internal political presentation I made to a gathering of one of our alliance partners. As the chairperson of the ANC in Gauteng, I was giving an update to one of our alliance partners about the progress and challenges we are experiencing in implementing one of the 2019 ANC manifesto commitment to fight crime in our province. The content of my presentation, as per the league, came across as insensitive and threatening to a government minister, and for that I apologize and accept full responsibility for what I said. Comrades, energy is not a responsibility of a provincial government. But the provincial government that I have the honor to lead said that we can't fold our arms when our people are going through difficulties. We can, when we have the financial muscle to intervene, hold our money and say this is a problem of national government and local government. I'm proud that the government that I have the honor to lead will buy 522 transformers in all our townships, in all our informal settlements, in all our hostels, so that our people can get power. We are not going to Cheshire Namurao purely because one minister at National is sleeping and snoring. We are not sleeping, we are not snoring, we are ready to go and save our people. So from this week, every week without failure, we will install and bring electricity and install 11 transformers every week until the end of the summer. It's a commitment that you are not ready to leave it unattended. And any minister and any national organization or national institution that will stand on our way when we want to give people our transformers, that individual or organization will crush it here in our province. We are very clear. ESCOM must not be an opposition party in our country and in our country. We are very clear, ESCOM is an institution of an ANC-led government. It must toward the line of the African National Congress. There is no independence here. We are in charge, we have been elected by our people, and ESCOM is an institution of the state. It must behave or else we must crush the leadership of that country. We are ready for it. We are ready to lead that revolution. There is no neutrality here. If they want to reform and to be part of this government, they must listen to us. This thing of asking our people before they connect them to pay 500 or 6,000 must come to an end. Connect our people and give them to 
We are firm and we are unwavering on that commitment. And anyone that still wants to come back next year to be a minister must listen to us or else we we'll chuck them out when we become a minister. Colleagues, we are further proud that as this province we champion the cause to say municipalities in our province can use their last cent to pay, to pay an outstanding debt that is increasing with long interest to ESCO. We let we went to the president of our country and say, President, for us to win Hauke, there is one thing that must happen. We need to scrap the debt that our people are owing. And I'm proud that the president has listened to us, and I'm proud that the Minister of Finance has listened to us. All the debt that we owe to ESCOM by all our municipalities in Gauteng and across the country has been slapped and we are starting to come in. We are starting on the new stage. And we are requesting the municipalities as well to follow suit. We are requesting the municipalities to follow suit. ESCOM can't scrap their debt, and they cannot scrap the debt of our citizens. And I'm very clear, comrades. When we go and sample, we need to have support on this matter. When we go to formulate the manifesto for the 2024 election, there is one issue that we are putting on the agenda of that manifesto county. We say our government is spending 70 billion every year on the basis of paid indigents for indigents not to pay electricity and water. But unfortunately, this 70 billion is shared with everyone in the country. Mutsipe, whose reach is getting free water and electricity. Ivan Koza, whose reach is getting free water. All rich people and people that can afford in this country are getting free water and electricity. We want to go to that manifesto and that money must be retrieved from the rich and be taken to the townships and be taken to the informal sector and be taken to the hostel and say, in the township, if you stay in the informal settlement, if you stay in the in the hostels, you must be given 1,500 limit as the amount that you must not pay if you use water and electricity above 1,500. That's what you must pay. We must pay that. We are paying the debate of a flat rate for me. We are paying the debate of a flat rate. If you are in the township, if you are in the informal settlement, if you are in the hostel, we are saying you must get the benefit of 1,500 from the 70 billion allocated by government. It's only when you use more water and electricity beyond 1,500 that you must pay for those particular services. That's an intervention that will assist and alleviate our people. But we are also saying, in the manifest of the ANC, if this matter is not on the agenda, I hope Sango is going to support us. We want to follow the government. We are saying this. The bonded house, the bonded house, everyone that is staying in the bonded house, especially white people and all those that are rich, those houses that are bonded, they belong to the bank. And therefore, the municipality must send an invoice about water and electricity to the bank that is the owner, not to the person that is the owner.